Today's video is kindly sponsored by Fiverr. I don't know about you, but it always feels like there's so many aspects of my life that I'm juggling. I'm trying to finish all my readings for university class. I'm trying to finish my assignments. I'm trying to have a YouTube channel. I'm trying to have a social life. I'm trying to get enough sleep. I'm trying to look after myself. I'm trying to thrive, not just survive. The way that I personally manage all the different streams of my life in a way that allows for both organization and spontaneity is to create systems. I have a system for how I do schoolwork, a system for how I do YouTube, a system for getting things like laundry done. Anything which is generally repeated in your day-to-day -day life, you can create a system around. It's something you easily repeat without effort so that you get it done in the best, most efficient way possible. But how do you know your systems are working unless you stop to review them? So many of my systems have failed and that's fine, that's life. Rather than blaming myself and saying, oh, I'm so lazy, I instead should look at the system and be like, it's not a good system. It's too ambitious, doesn't fit my life, requires too much motivation. It's just not a good system. Today, I'm gonna get honest and tell you about my current workflow systems, how I think I should improve them, and I'm gonna experiment and try and make them better. This video is also very kindly sponsored by Fiverr, which if you know Fiverr, is bloody cool. Okay, so my first systems are academic. This is how I do my class readings. I've got so much to do today. But today I have 92 pages, 92 pages of reading to do for my class. I go to a wonderful and incredibly stressful university called Minerva and rather than having a lecture where a professor talks to you and guides you through a topic, I have 90 minute classes which are a bit like tutorials where I'm expected to do all the readings and all the kind of teaching myself before the class and then the whole class is spent digging into the concepts, applying them to new scenarios, kind of being tested on it, having discussion about it. It took me a long time to work out the best way to learn for this model because it's so reliant on me being on top of my life and getting my readings done before class. The problem, wanting to be prepared for classes. The task, class readings. The current system, Hey guys, so it is a Sunday and I'm planning out my week. You know, life can be stressful and I wanna be ahead. I wanna know what's coming up. I don't wanna wake up every day of university and wonder what academic challenges they're gonna throw at me that day. No, I wanna look at it in advance, be ready, be prepared. It's been a part of my system for the last few years to always take time on a Sunday just to look at the next week. I look at my goals for the month and for that week. I look at my deadlines. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna plan out my readings for the next few classes. Because sometimes I have a hefty amount. Sometimes there's barely any reading to do. And I'm like, oh, I could have enjoyed my life more that day. Like, why have I not planned that in advance? So based off of how well I know myself, and how long it takes to do, say, a 10 page reading of neuroscience versus 90 pages of philosophy, I have something called a mandatory minimum, which is the minimum amount of time I need to schedule in my calendar to get this thing done and do it well. So based on my minimums for each class, I'm gonna put them in my Google Calendar. I also designed a template for my pre-class work and readings because I noticed that there was just a similar format each time. I make notes from the readings, I have to write myself a summary, I have to ask myself questions, and I love using the toggle feature of Notion because then you can create little quiz questions, you can test yourself, you can turn them into flashcards later. Okay, now let's think about the friction. What could be improved in this system? What goes wrong in my class reading system? Why am I sometimes unprepared? Why am I sometimes stressed? I know one of the first things that used to go wrong in this system was I would underestimate how long it would take me to actually get things done. I thought a reading was gonna take me half an hour and then I was miserably unprepared and I got called on and it was just like me being like, professor, I don't get this. I wanna avoid that. And the solution for me was just estimating more frequently the work that I wanna do and then going back and seeing how long it actually took me. And until I was good at estimating how long things would take me, I would always add a solid 10 or 20 minutes to my estimate just to make sure I gave myself breathing room. Number two point of friction in this system is location. So I'm quite good at planning how long readings are going to take me and slotting it into my calendar. But the question is, when I've got class that day, where do I go to do my readings? Where do I go to do my academic prep? Do I go to the library? Do I stay home? Do I go to a workspace? Do I go to a cafe? Do I go to a friend's house? Where do I work? If I stay home, I get bored, I get unmotivated, I get distracted by going to eat food. This isn't always the case. Sometimes I love a cozy study day at home, but generally I'm more productive if I have separation to my house. If there is too much friction to choosing, I just won't go. If I'm like, oh yeah, Jade, you should go out somewhere to go do your readings. I waste so much time deciding where to go and there's just so much friction to getting started that I, I'm just not being very productive. So my solution is that 
that maybe on a Sunday I can also plan in the location for all my study sessions that week. Number three, motivation. My system often assumes that I'm gonna be super motivated to do the readings that I planned for myself and give myself the exact allotted time. Some days I don't want to read. I'm not super motivated and that is normal. I think a good solution to this is choice architecture and I think I could systemize this better. The idea is you set up your environment, you set up your life to make choosing the task, like choosing studying, the easiest thing. For example, if I know I have a lot of readings in the morning and I just wanna sit here on my desk and get them done, I can set up my desk the night before so I can clean it, I can get rid of everything that would make it hard for me to sit down and do the work. I can put down all my resources, my laptop, books, and I can put my phone on the other side of the room on airplane mode so that when I wake up, even if I feel so unmotivated to do the work, I've made it so easy for myself. Like I have literally set up my life. So I just walk to the desk, I just sit and I just do it. I think one thing I could introduce into my system is to start every study session with a Pomodoro. I've done this at points in my life, but right now it's just not part of my habits. If you don't know what the Pomodoro technique is, it is wonderful. You set a timer for 25 minutes, and for those 25 minutes, you can only work on one set task. You can't try and conquer the world. You can't write an essay and do revision and do 100 things. You can only choose one task, and if you get distracted, you have to start again. And then after this one Pomodoro session, you get a five minute break. And the reason I think this would really work in making this a system, making it a habit that I always start with a pomodoro is because for me there's so much friction to just starting like for me thinking about studying is often so much harder than just going and doing the work so what pomodoro does is it really breaks it down it just says hey do 25 minutes just focus on one thing for 25 minutes and you sort of gotten over the hump of starting and all the rest is just so much easier generally though i really like my academic system i think it's taken me you know i'm in my third year it's taken me three years of uni to work out the style of my untraditional uni and how to write as many assignments as I have alongside the classwork, alongside life, but I've got a system that works for me. Okay, so now we come on to my system for how I make YouTube videos. And I must say, I have taken so much inspiration from the wonderful Ali Abdal. He's my good friend and a legend in the productivity YouTube space, and he talks a lot about creating systems and how they can improve your life. So here, the problem. Wanting to post quality videos on YouTube and maintain a consistent Instagram presence and experiment with short form content like Instagram Reels and TikTok. The task, planning videos, editing videos, making a thumbnail, making the tags and description, doing research, script writing, Instagram stories, taking photos for Instagram, uh, editing Reels, TikToks, keeping up with trends. Like social media has so many elements to it to try and do it as a job. And I find so many aspects of it so hard to systemize because a lot of it's very creative. Sometimes I'm in the mood to film, sometimes I'm just not. I love spontaneity, especially with Instagram and also scrolling and like seeing trends and TikTok, all of that can be very time consuming and, and me just end up being a consumer rather than making content. The current system. Okay, so I use a Notion Kanban board to plan all my YouTube videos. It's amazing, my whole life depends on Notion. I have a column where I brainstorm video ideas, most of which honestly don't get turned into videos. And then as I start to like these ideas, I can drag them along into a genuine idea that I want to develop, something that I want to then write bullet points on, I want a content script, then I can move it into ready to be filmed, ready to be edited, ready to be posted, and finally posted. And this just helps me keep track of where I am on my videos. And then I use Google Calendar to slot in my filming and editing time. All my videos have a template for the creative process. My template was inspired by Ali Abdal's. It helps me structure my videos better. I don't have a system for Instagram or TikTok. I just tend to use them more casually and sporadically. And if you follow me on there, firstly, like my Instagram is my baby. I just love that platform. People on there but yeah, it often leads me to being ineffective time-wise or posting, you know, not every day or not even predictably. And the issue with my current system is while I'm at university, I am overwhelmed, overwhelmed with work, with life, with so much going on and university has to be my priority. So to do the YouTube world, it just is hard. <laughs> this semester I've been brainstorming how to create a more efficient system. And recently I've been trying working with an editor for sit down videos, which is so hard for me because I am just a control freak. Like guys, I can't even tell you what it's like to give someone just like a video of your face and be like, 
turn this into something and like half the time in the video I'm like oh like what do I say like oh my god and when you try working with an editor they have to see all of that which is a bit tragic <laughs> but I would love to try this for TikTok and Reels because I'm so inconsistent at short form content what I'm especially intrigued by is I put so much effort into long form videos that there's so much content I could theoretically repurpose. I can turn old YouTube videos into short form content that people would enjoy. But the idea of re-editing my own videos to distill the key points is so exhausting and long and I just don't have the time for it even though I have the intention to do it. Which is why it's so freaking cool that this video is sponsored by Fiverr. I don't know if you guys have heard of Fiverr but it is a, such an incredible platform where it connects talented people with skills and people who need jobs done. And on this platform you can be either side. So for example I have a friend who is incredible incredible at making websites. He wanted to make a bit of extra money, so now he is a Fiverr seller. He can work remotely, he makes money off of his skills, and I've also been a buyer many times. For example, for my dad's birthday, I was like, a bit random, a bit niche creative. Why don't we make up a logo for my family? <laughs> For my family of four <laughs> and i told the seller a bunch of features about my family things that i think represent us and then they created a wonderful logo which is now our family group chat profile picture almost anything you need to get done someone will have the talent and skill for it if you want something edited if you want someone to write website copy if you want someone to draw a picture of you all these different things you can find on fiverr i've also used it in the past for people to subtitle my videos because i want to make them more accessible but i don't have time to subtitle them myself so today i'm going to find some sellers who are experienced in making Instagram reels or TikTok content. I'm gonna tell them my goals and then I'm gonna hope that they can repurpose my content. Let's do it. Okay, I love that I can see reviews from people who have worked with these people before. You can see example products, you can see if they've made something similar to what you want. Hey, I die at this intro, this is brilliant. I'm actually a very lazy guy, but I do deliver my work on time. I love Rattle's honesty. Let me contact him because that's the energy I like. Okay, I've just sent him a cheeky little message, slid into the DMs, and we'll wait and see his reply. Okay guys, so Rattle replied. I just predicted it, he's too good. He's overbooked for a few days and I need this ASAP. So unfortunately it's not gonna be Rattle, but someone else has caught my eye. King Productions, think, create, inspire. That's the energy. He's a level two buyer. He's got some great skills. He's got so many five star reviews. This is the guy. He replied within one minute. That is impressive. Okay, so he sent me an offer. Oh, okay. You know what, I recently took a negotiation class and I'm such a people pleaser, so I'm probably the worst negotiator in negotiation history, but I want to get better. This is my opportunity. The interesting fact that I read in this report about negotiation is women are generally a lot worse. They perform worse in negotiating for themselves than men. Men are so happy to negotiate a better offer for themselves as an individual. But women, you know, sometimes you just feel a bit like insecure. You don't want to ask for too much. I don't know what it is, but don't feel comfortable. But women outperform men when they are negotiating on behalf of someone else. Like if it is your child, if it is your friend, like you can just sell them better and then you can get them a better deal. So knowing that I'm gonna negotiate on behalf of my YouTube channel as an entity, not, not as me. <laughs> can you do me a deal? Five videos for $130. He's super talented, super skilled, super experienced. That's fair. It's a deal. Wait, I just saved myself $20. <laughs> okay, and I also want to get someone at a lower price point. Ahmed6199 can edit my TikTok for $10. Pretty good, cool. Okay, let's, let's make him an offer. Okay, wow, that was surprisingly simple. And we wait for the content. <laughs> and meanwhile, while the Fiverr people work, I want to review my systems for social life. I don't know if you guys know, but I am obsessed with relationships. I listen to so many podcasts about human psychology, what makes a good relationship, both romantic, familial, platonic, all of them, different types of love, challenges in love, basically just how to foster good people in my life and learn about myself through the process. Subconsciously, we all think of our friends in concentric circles with ourselves in the middle and people going out further and out depending on how much time we invest in them. I think of my closest friends as people who know my day-to-day -day life, like my regular daily thoughts, 
updates, etc. like the first people I would tell. And we don't have the capacity for many of these people. Next level of friends, they know what's going on in your life, they support you, you're close with them, they know most, but it's not at a daily level. And then as you go further out, people know less and less and you invest less in them. I get so busy at uni, I don't have as much energy to invest in the people I care about because I'm putting so much energy in myself. That's why I think it's useful to think of your social life in terms of systems. I was really inspired to think this way by some of my Minerva friends. People who have so much on, like I have friends who run companies or have a non-profit in their home country or, or they're virtually teaching their siblings English or like random, so many random things going on in people's lives and yet they're still able to maintain such incredible, close, meaningful relationships. And what I've realized is it's not just because of spontaneity, it's because they plan their friendship a little bit. They say, I care about you, therefore I'm going to dedicate two times a week to seeing you for a quality time where I'm not on my phone, where I'm not thinking about anything else. I have other friends who at night will dedicate an hour, dedicate a whole hour to just replying to people, replying to messages, to FaceTiming friends, FaceTiming family. And that's like part of their routine is this time I am made for catching up. And I think a lot of us do it subconsciously, but I think putting it into a system means you're more likely to maintain it. The problem, wanting to maintain close relationships with people even though you're super busy. The task, investing in people. And my current system, currently I color code my Google Calendar for like social activities versus academic activities versus YouTube activities and this just helps me make sure that I'm meeting with people enough. My friction is I get so busy that I'm pouring energy into myself so I just don't have the energy to reply to everyone. Also if I've been on a screen the whole day I just don't want to FaceTime people. I want to see people in person but I don't want to spend more time on a screen. My friends can also be super busy so it can be hard to align schedules with them. And finally different expectations. For example different love languages. For me I could be thinking I'm expressing a lot of love to my friends because for example I value quality time and words of affirmation but if they value meaningful thoughtful gifts then I can show them just as much love if I pick up their favorite snack on the way to going to see them because to them that is very meaningful in a friendship. So I think understanding the people that you want to maintain relationships with is very useful. To maintain my long-term friendships, my solution is to schedule calls in advance with my family members. Anytime that I'm walking anywhere or I'm in a cafe or I'm finished work, I'm just gonna always test my family like, hey, like spontaneously, are you free? Also setting expectations with them that short calls are sometimes easier for me than like really long ones. And then if I do a long one, I like, I'm out to plan it more. Dedicating time on my weekends, on my reset days, like on a Sunday when I'm cleaning the house to call people I love. One system that me and my friends put in this semester was to get a membership to the same co-working space. So naturally I see them almost every day that I go there, which is like casual interactions, which leads to us going for dinner sometimes together or coffee. I'm actually quite stuck on this. I think I'm gonna do some research, but I would also love to hear your thoughts on systems for keeping in touch with people, for maintaining good friendships, relationships, family relationships, all of this. And also your thoughts on systemizing it. Should it be a system? Should there be a base level which is a system and then the rest is just spontaneity as most friendships, relationships are. Hey guys, and welcome to the moment of truth. So my wonderful two sellers on Fiverr have sent me the TikToks. I don't know why I'm so nervous. I find it like, I find it weird watching videos that someone else has edited. <laughs> okay, first up we have King Productions, my man, King Productions. Let's do it, okay. In this video, I'm gonna talk about four things in my journey to increase Oh, my can we just pause for a second? Love those icons. They look really cool. Okay, continue. Four things in my journey to increase my comfort zone. The first is public speaking. I did two things. I joined a drama club and secondly, I signed up for almost every school assembly at my local stables. The this is not yeah. bad. Okay, human I too. love I'm the quick captions. Doing things alone. I'm huge. Also, I'm so I'm just so picky. Sometimes he the um what's it called? Sometimes sometimes the subtitles are like kind of spelt wrong. But that's such an easy fix. I can just tell him. Advantage on independence in general. Like everything. Is oh, this is good. I like four, it. New cultures, new foods, and trying new things and different ways of life. It is out of our comfort zones to change our routines. That was such a pleasant surprise. I'm really impressed. I just gave him the link to the video. That was it. It was all the instruction I gave. And he took some of the best moments from the video for sure. Wow. Okay, next one. Oh, I, lo I love this video. Here are my 10 reasons why I truly love learning and I love studying. Number one, I love challenging myself. Number two, I love learning as a tool for growth. Number three, I love shifting my world perspective around. Oh, Number four, I love that working hard over Look at this little green banner thing he 
he's got going on. on. Others. Seven. The outcome. Not bad. Can be so satisfying. We love the feeling of working hard. We do. Agreed. We want. Oh, it's, I like it. Keeps it. Entertaining. I don't like the pink color. The pink color of the text. But again, easy fix. Picky, picky. Doesn't have to be who can make an impact. In the Hype world. me up. Oh, that was great. I would consider posting these with a few like minor. With a few minor edits, I would post these. Overall, King Productions, he delivered on time. It was amazing communication. Great work, good interpretation. Well done on the challenge. It's a four out of five from me. Okay, now alternatively, let's see how Ahmed did. This only cost me $10. Today, I wanna to talk about the fact that I love myself. I'm gonna talk about why you should love yourself too. It makes me angry. The girls are not happy with themselves or confident. The way your body looks, your quirks, your talent, your personality, everything. See it, feel it, own it. The biggest rebellion that you can do in 2020 is to love yourself exactly as you I are. This video. It comes and to cleanse. Oh, I like the outro. For $10? This is amazing. If I was gonna post this, I think I would want some more subtitles to like help convey the message, which is not something I put in my order. Ahmed is clearly talented, but I am a picky as hell person. So I think I'm gonna give it two or three out of five. I also mean, just because I wouldn't post it in this stage because the message isn't as Mm. But then but then for $10, what do I expect, right? King Productions, he got it. He was the winner today. But oh my god, this is so cool having people like create something else out of my content. This process has inspired me to do this again, but to now actually give specific order requirements. Yeah, guys, welcome to the world of me starting to outsource because this is good. If you're interested in using any of Fiverr's amazing services, use this link and you can get 10% off with the code unjaded. And for all the miscellaneous things in my life, so this is laundry, cleaning my apartment, managing my finances, buying groceries, all of these adulting things, which take a surprising amount of time. I don't have a super formal system. I'm, I'm somewhat sporadic. For example, I want something washed. I'm obviously going to do laundry then. But I generally have a reset on a Sunday. I generally like clean my apartment, do any laundry that's built up. But some of the little systems I've set up, for example, to do with finances, as long as I have enough finances that month, I have money going out of my bank account into a pension because I'm a sophisticated queen. Guys, if you haven't set up a pension, go do it. It just takes a few hours. Do some research. Find a pension that especially supports like environmental, social good causes, ideally. Put your money there, future you will love you. I also have money going into an ISA, which is basically just like a savings account. So if my life falls apart, I have some savings. And then finally, every month, I have a certain amount of money going into a high impact charity so that I don't have to rely on the feeling of me wanting to do good in the world or the feeling of me wanting to be organized with like savings. It's a system, it's just there, it's doing it for me. I've set it up in advance. I have my morning routine, my yoga, my exercise, my breakfast, all these things. And obviously some days it's more flexible, but generally I have a routine there. Not gonna lie, recently I've been getting a lot of takeaway and eating out because I've been lazy. <laughs> but generally I like a system of cooking dinner in the evening and making more and having it for lunch the next day. So like meal prepping or just making food in bulk and like freezing it and then having it the next few nights because cooking takes so much time and I really hate washing up. I'm just not a fan of it. I just get so messy in the kitchen that you've got to do what you've got to do. And despite all these systems, I am such a spontaneous, sporadic, let's go with the flow person. I'm actually so much like that, which is why I need these systems or I just won't get anything done. My systems are my base from which I can creatively grow from. So what do you want to systemize? Think about what you want to create a system for. Especially good activities are things which you regularly repeat, things which are currently taking you a long time, something you think you could do more efficiently but you just haven't really put the energy towards trying to improve the way you do it. And honestly, Fiverr can help you so much here. Imagine that you're a university student and you also have a part-time job in a bar a few nights a week. Imagine that you know your favorite way to arise is to have really good flashcards from your notes. It doesn't really help you the process of making the flashcard, but when you're reviewing them, that's when you're learning. However, it takes you so much time to create good quality flashcards and you're busy and you're working. What if you outsourced 
someone on Fiverr for the cost of maybe two hours wages and you just got them to distill your notes into flashcards. You're saving time generally so that you're doing the most impactful part of the revision process which is using the flashcards and then you're still making money at work. I don't know if that is a service on Fiverr but basically what I'm trying to say is they have so many creative possibilities for interesting services and how they can help your life. I just want to say I'm naturally so bad at outsourcing, at delegating, at even asking for help because I am a control freak and I have this narcissistic belief that like, oh, I'm gonna do it better. Like I just know what I want, right? And I'm slowly learning to see the value in allowing others, talented others to help you, to give you feedback, to do tasks that yes, you could do yourself, but you could use your time better elsewhere. And if you have the extra money, the extra resources, then check out something like Fiverr. I hope this video inspires you to look at some of your systems and to think about how you can optimize them. Whether it's your routines for how you exercise, how you cook, how you revise, how you study, how you manage your finances, how you meet deadlines, like what are some of the systems that could really improve your life. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.